indeed necessary. Joining me right now is criminal defense attorney Paige Pate. I have to I have to tell you that when I hear the police chief in Charlotte say today that they're not going to release this tape only to the family of the deceased, that's a mistake. Transparency rules in this, right? Oh, I absolutely think so. Transparency is no threat to the truth. Now, this chief said releasing the video would jeopardize the investigation, but I can't figure out how. I mean, people yeah. want to see what went on. If it supports the officer, fine, release it. If it doesn't, release it. Either way, the people need to know. Conversely, in Tulsa, without the video cam here, with, without that, this police officer, in all probability, would not be facing these manslaughter charges. I believe that's true. I mean, we saw cases like this for many, many years before we had... Uh, you know, cell phones with videos and social media and law enforcement, the folks that investigated excessive force cases, they would always believe the police officer's version of the events, especially if there was no one there to tell the other side of the story. There are rules of engagement that are very, very specific in terms of how deadly force should be implemented by law enforcement, yet this is a subject that is ambiguous. Every situation is different. You can have all of this structured verbiage in the world, but the reality is you never know what you're going to face in law enforcement. I think that is the problem. I mean, most law enforcement agencies have policies and protocols about when you should use force and how you should use it. But if you look to the law, the standard is very vague. It's basically if you have a reasonable belief that you're uh, basically facing imminent threat or bodily harm to you or to someone else. I mean, that's a very vague legal definition. I think it would be helpful if we're all working from the same sheet of music, if we have a set of clear national standards where officers know what they can and cannot do, and then I think the public would have more confidence. I heard an interesting line from Hillary Clinton today who was talking about this issue. I, I heard it on the radio today where she was saying basically she didn't have all of the answers to this as well. And that would seem to be something that resonates through African-American communities, uh, you know, suburban communities, wherever you may go in this country, there doesn't seem to be any clear resolution of how to proceed forward beyond community policing. And maybe that is your answer. I think so. And I, and I think it helps the officers, too. I mean, it, it's very difficult after the fact to make a subjective determination whether or not the officer was reasonable in determining that he or she was in fear for their lives at the point where they felt they needed to pull their service weapon and use it. If we give them clear guidelines going into those situations, then I think it's better for them and I think it's better for the public. Do you think we are going to see in the years ahead, and this is sort of looking into your crystal ball, and this is what you have been doing all of your adult life involved in, in such things, do you believe that there will be more of a federal jurisdiction in law enforcement at a state and local level in the years to come? I think there has to be. I mean, we've seen now the Department of Justice go in after the fact with these pattern and practice investigations where they will criticize a police uh, agency like they did in Ferguson for the way they operate, like they did in Baltimore. So eventually, if you have the right administration and the right Department of Justice, you may see them come in ahead of time and provide training and guidance. The question is how much federal control is too much federal control? Well, a lot of states aren't going to like that. You're Not going at all. to see a lot of lawsuits. Thus, it may be tied up in the courts, and then, you know, you, you certainly have an impasse here in terms of trying to troubleshoot all of this. Right, but isn't the question safety? I mean, if we can make law enforcement safer in their jobs and make the community safer when they encounter law enforcement, I think that should be the overriding goal. And if we're looking to do that, then there's a way to accomplish it on a national level with an agreed-upon set of standards. If you were in charge, and we have a brief amount of time here, what do you think is one step that might bring some peace to communities. Transparency. I mean, we go back to what's happening in Charlotte. They need to know what happened. And if there's evidence that supports or, or even refutes what they're saying, let's see it. Let's get it out there. We can't go back to the days where we simply accepted the version that the officer gave. Right. We have video evidence now. Let us see it. Let us make up our own minds about what happened. Attorney Page Pate, as always, we appreciate your expertise. Thank you. Thank you, you Jeff. Katie.